In this video, we're going to solve uh, some more inequalities, but these inequalities are going to require a few more steps than what we've done in some previ previous videos. So when solving inequalities, you take the same process that you would for solving a regular equation. The only difference is if you wind up having to multiply or divide by a negative. So looking at this problem, I'm looking to combine like terms. I can put the negative 4 and the negative 5 together on the right hand side. So I have negative 4 equals negative 9 minus k. And then now we're looking to isolate the k. So I'm going to move that minus 9 to the other side by adding it. Negative 4 plus 9 gives me 5, so i got 5 is greater than or equal to negative k. Well, I am not done until the variable is all by itself. So I have that negative sign there. I'm, so I'm going to divide, because I need it to be positive k, divide both sides by negative 1. Or technically, you could multiply both sides by negative 1 accomplish the same goal. So I'd have negative 5 and k, positive k, now, because I multiplied or divided both sides by negative, I've got to turn that inequality sign the other direction. So I have negative 5 less than or equal to k, which means that I have a solid circle at negative 5. And since the opening's towards k, I've got to shade towards bigger numbers. This problem here, negative 22 less than or equal to r minus 7 plus 4r. You start by looking to combine like terms. I can put the r and the 4r's together on the right-hand side, which is going to give me 5r minus 7 on the right. Then we'll start the isolation process. So I'm going to add 7 to the other side, which is going to take it off the right. And that's going to give negative 22 plus 7 is negative 15, less than or equal to 5 times r. And now we're going to divide both sides by 5. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. And I have a positive r. The inequality sign does not flip because we did not divide both sides by a negative. So our final answer here is negative 3 less than or equal to r. So solid circle, negative 3. The opening of the inequality sign is towards the r. So I'm shading towards bigger numbers. All right, next one here. Um, start off by looking to combine like terms on the left-hand side. Uh, rewrite the problem so I have some more room. I can put together the 2, the negative 2, and the 7 on the left, which if I do that, the 2's here are going to cancel, and it's just going to leave me with plus 7. So here I'm looking, and if I wanted to try to pick what side of this uh, expression I wanted my ends on, let's say if I wanted to come over here onto the left and say, all right, I want to move this 2 in to be on the same side where this 2n is. And if I go through that process, what happens is I'm left with a statement. 7 is less than or equal to positive 7. Well, there's no other variables left, which means that we have to figure out, well, how do I do this on my number line here? Well. When all of your variables disappear and you're left with a statement, you, are, you have to ask yourself, is this a true statement or not? Is 7 less than or equal to 7? Well, yes it is. And what this means is, since it's left with a true statement, we have an infinite number of solutions. Basically, that means whatever you decide to put in for the variable n, you're always going to get a true statement. So when you have, this is a special case here. Uh, the other special case is no solution. But if I have infinite number of solutions, in terms of my number line, I just shade the whole number line. Next problem. 
All right, so we start off by looking to combine like terms. I can combine like terms on the right-hand side because I have x and I have 5x. So I'll do that and we'll rewrite. So we have 7 plus 6x is less than 6x plus 1. And we try to get our x's on the same side. So let's say I want to put my x's on the left. So I'm going to subtract this 6x and put it on the left-hand side. And what happens is this x's cancel out and I'm left with 7 less than 1. No variable left. Well, you ask yourself, if, is this a true or a false statement? That is false. 7 is not less than 1. And so this would be no solution. Now, if you have no solution, in terms of your number line, there is no shading to do because your shading indicates the possible solutions to the equations. In this problem, we're looking at we don't have any terms to combine to simplify. So this is an example of a problem that we would, we would have to distribute in order to uh, proceed. So I'm going to take that negative 3 and I'm going to multiply it to everything inside of the parentheses. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply it to the second term, which I would have to include that uh, negative sign in front of the 3v. So negative 3 times negative 3v makes positive 9v. And then we work from here in this line. So we pick what side we want our variables on. I'm just going to say, well, let's move that 6v to be to the right. So I'm going to move that 6v by subtracting it. That's going to give me negative 18 is greater than negative 3 plus 3 times v. And then I'm going to move the negative 3 by adding it to the other side to be with the negative 18. Negative 18 plus 3 is negative 15. So negative 15 is greater than 3 times v. And the last thing left is to divide that 3 off of the v. So I divide both sides by 3. And that's going to give us negative 5 greater than v. We do not flip that inequality sign because we did not divide both sides by a negative. And so here, we would go find negative 5 on our number line, put an open circle, and the pointed part is towards the v, so we shade towards smaller numbers. Last problem here. So... I'm looking at this one, there are no terms to combine, and the only moves that we have to start is to fully expand. So we have to uh, start distributing. And so we're going to start by taking this first 3, and we're going to multiply it to everything inside of the parentheses. So that's going to give me 3 times 4n is 12n. 3 times positive 4 makes plus 12. And we have less than... And then we have to distribute the negative 5. So negative 5 times negative 8 makes positive 40. Negative 5 times negative 8n makes positive 40n. And then we work to solve from here. So here, let's pick what side we want our n's on. I'm going to say, well, we have positive 40n's on the right. So let's just move that 12n to be where there's more n's. So I'm going to minus the 12n. So that way the 12 n goes to the right hand side. We have 12 is less than 40 plus 40 minus 12 is 28 n. And then now we're isolating the n, so I gotta move the 40 to the left hand side. So I'm gonna subtract it. 12 minus 40 makes negative 28 less than 28n. And lastly, we got to divide that 28 that's multiplying to the n. So I'm going to divide both sides by positive 28. And that's going to give me, so negative 28 divided by positive 28 makes negative 1. We do not flip that inequality sign because I didn't divide by a negative on both sides. And um, we have n. So negative 1 less than in. So I go to negative 1, put an open circle. The open side of the inequality sign is towards the end, so I shade towards bigger numbers.